The folks of the Celestial Magic Universe live together in the clouds to make the magic. But I'm all by myself trying to take on those magical puzzles in... Top 10 Puzzles I Did in the Celestial Magic Universe Hunt! Finding connections is hard. For one, as I relied on knowing who I hunted with beforehand and had trouble finding such people nearby, I thought going solo was the only option. But there's also the Only Connect puzzles in the overlay. The goal of Only Connect is to group 16 words into 4 categories, but the challenge is that some words may fit into more than one category. Some of the categorical finds were fairly obvious, but I found a good number of them just by brute forcing combinations and taking advantage of the checker. But in a puzzle hunt, I need to extract an answer phrase from the categorization, and the real challenge came from that. I know we overlay categories and I do see some overlapping, but turns out we overlay everything and taking a category from all the categories we make. Now, who else is there? Although I'm able to get through the first two puzzles without a problem, things get rather unfortunate once I get stuck. As a one-man army, the only outside help I can get are my limited supply of hint requests. But there's one exception! One friend helped me look at the Who Am I puzzle and make a connection to a series of unfortunate events with her experience. This series has Violet, Claws, and Sunny go through really unfortunate events and contend with Count Olaf. Not the snowman, but the one who takes on all sorts of disguises that become relevant in this puzzle. My friend was only available for that one puzzle, but that time connecting is probably the main reason why this ended up being my favorite feeder puzzle of the first round. But yeah, I might want to start reading the series. Now this is easy peasy! Alright, I got to the first meta puzzle. I'm bringing a handy dandy's notebook's worth of previous puzzle answers to find out what happened at rhyme time. My clues are... The rhyming pattern... The boxes... And all those feeder puzzle answers. And thinking up the solution was super obvious. Come up with rhyming phrases, then taking a box letter to form one more rhyming phrase. Even without knowing what one of the feeders are, I still got a keen eye for some blues clues. With that said, what that meant was those magicians were feeling sad, even with all the chemistry experience they produced. I often get that feeling just from being a lonely hunter. But I'm still super determined to help solve the problem. But there's a tight time limit in the CMU hunt, and the grind is really ramping up! Saving the Magic Realm is bound to have a lot going on, especially with some of the earlier second round puzzles like Saving the Spiral. I am looking at a card game based on Wizard 101 as well as a deck to work with. Good thing I have a sample gameplay to get a sense of what is going on, but even then, parsing these instructions while focusing on the card type gets even more involved than those math word problems. It's a good thing the instructions say to just focus on the turns and pits. And all of that is just for a mechanically simple premise of just counting turns to get a series of 5 cards to read off binary. I'm sometimes known for writing big, complicated descriptions just for something simple, and this puzzle put me on the receiving end. But then comes a much simpler puzzle. Time to look at some good old wordplay puzzles with the times they are changing. One of the first clues that I got was fixed prayer endings. From my experience, the word amen came to mind, which led to amend for fix and amens for prayer endings. That train of thought led to the mechanically simple premise of finding two words such that the D can be swapped with an S. Such a nice breather after some long puzzles, and makes sense considering the weird typo in the flavor text. Speaking of which, at 1am EST, the CMU crew issued an errata that corrected the typo to weirdest, which is a really nice touch to fall daylight saving time and serves as a nice hint for those solving in the morning. And on that note, people can get one more hour of sleep, which I promptly use to solve more puzzles in hopes of finishing. Now hopping over to the top 5! The first puzzle I looked at from the third round was bar hopping. I've looked at crossword puzzles before during the hunt, but this one is a cryptic crossword, where I work with not only definitions, but also wordplay. Fortunately, these dual mechanics allow me to be extra confident on my work as I first work through clues involving anagramming and taking parity among the down clues. This is because the across clues don't have enumerations, ordering, and bar separations. I need to restore those bars with some logic, but once that's done, getting the final answer is easy as looking right beside them. And my interest continues in the morning. With only a few hours left in the hunt, I took a look at compound interest, and after a few seconds of looking, I knew exactly what to do. See that stick figure part and those arrows? That looks like carbon dioxide and oxygen. It's a cryptogram, but with chemical elements getting some good old flashbacks to the good old days of chemistry. So it's just a matter of identifying the chemical compounds that come straight out of organic chemistry and more. 
However, there are compounds with the same number of each element, yet are completely different. That's due to the structure, so I had to be mindful of that. Some of the compounds may have alternate names, but I was still able to pick out the answer phrase. Before my top pick, some honorable mentions! Philosophy and the Sunday Funnies. I got the comics, but turns out there's also ciphers and poetry. We Rewiring. I got the crosswords, but there turns out there's more New York Times puzzles. The Blueprint. I got some assembly, but turns out that's a curved data puzzle. There was only so much I can do as a one-man army, but I still wanted to point them out due to them being mechanically interesting. And finally, my top three. Picking out my favorite was incredibly tricky, but I narrowed it down to three. So in unlock order, first up is Sorcerer's Apprentice. We're mixing the meta matching from the prompts from Inktober 2023, and I was able to snow sell most of the lessons. Even the Hidato was doable without an auto solver. By narrowing it down to a few unused prompts, I can consider which prompt numbers would likely go to the Hidato squares and work my way from there. But then I ran into a wall with the meta lesson. For one, identifying the match to the gathering reference without much experience is incredibly tricky. And even then, the indexing turned out to be just the elemental cost rather than total cost. Next up are puzzles too hard. Sad. Summit is working on logic puzzle test solves, but the playtesters seem to get lots of errors. But I knew from the start of lo a logic puzzle attempt that the solver pulled up a capping venue on the board by swapping them. As star battle boards don't have numbers, and with the website knocked out solutions, I can just straight up confirm which board goes with what. The real challenge is primarily identifying what logic puzzles are attempted from the description, like the Tetrano no placement being info for a list. And with a cyclical ordering, Puzzles Too Hard was something I was actually able to solo, while others were actually harder. And then there's First You Visit Pallet Town. You may have seen this trope when visiting MIT, Monopoly boards, and especially Burkina Faso. But we're starting off in Pallet Town of the Kanto region and ran to a Snorlax walking the road as I'm having a hard time finding prefixtures in the Pokemon games. Still, despite not knowing what to do with the beginning, I was still able to identify the layer locations due to Sinnoh being the only region that used route numbers in the 200s and then work backwards, though the letters I got from the locales were gibberish. As it turns out, the prefixture means I'm instead looking at the real world locations that inspire the many locales of the Pokemon world, even outside the main series games. It was actually fairly tricky ranking the three, and each puzzle had a lot going for. All three puzzles have some memorable aha moment that allowed me to make progress. Sorcerer's Apprentice had the scale, Puzzles Too Hard had the solo solve, and First You Visit Pallet Town had the resonation. But in the end, I'm giving the bronze to Sorcerer's Apprentice, the silver to Puzzles Too Hard, and the gold to First You Visit Pallet Town. The top two went a lot smoother, but what gave my first place pick an edge was having the balance of interesting concepts yet simple premise. Working backwards also made the variety of mapping shine too. And that wraps up the Celestial Magic Universe Hunt. And making progress when bearing it all myself is quite hard. There's a lot to take on, with some of the earlier puzzles feeling substantially longer than the later puzzles. But there's so much magical wonders that I want to share to the world, partly in hopes that more people can see the wonders and challenges of puzzles hunting that I often encounter alone. But while the magicians of the Celestial Magic Universe relied on producing a funny substance to feel better, I ultimately didn't need that to have a great sense of joy, even with low views. Aside from being impressed with just how far I can go alone, these engaging memory activities with kids after the hunt remind me of how there's always things to be thankful for, which really outshine the lowly sadness. So special thanks to the folks at CMU for making the magic, and for viewers like you, thank you!